you know, I mean, the escalation really did spook your stock yesterday. Do you do you agree with analysts that you're probably overpaying at this point in time for the expansion? It's a very aggressively priced expansion. So I think that first thing you have to realize that this is the first the large greenfield project of this size in 40 years anywhere in the world. And I think that uh, uh, people need to realize that this is a phase one platform that we are establishing. So to be fair, uh, the initial estimates that we had on the CapEx, probably we didn't get it perfectly right. But you know, as we did more detailed engineering, soil testing, it's the civil part that has gone up. Now, uh, we are very clear now that we have done a year worth of detailed engineering that we will be getting double digit returns on this project. Our cost of capital is about uh, 8% in US dollar terms. So this is a, a financially accretive project to us. And I think more important, it cements Novelis's position in the US by far as the largest role product player. So yes, there has been an escalation in CapEx cost, but this is a good project. It's strategic for us. And it positions us as the market leader that we are in the U.S. So I guess uh, we will, people will get over the CapEx increase when they see us delivering results quarter on quarter going ahead. But Satish, there's skepticism about you being able to meet that return guidance as well. I think uh, a bunch of analyst reports suggest that you will probably come in at lower than what you have suggested, which is double digits. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, if we have any... Uh, complaint against us is that normally we are very conservative. So I can tell you that when we say we'll get the double digit, we will get it because most of the contracts for this uh, 600 KT that's coming online have already been signed. So we know what the revenue and the top line is going to be. And we now have a fairly good handle on the costs of the project. So we are quite comfortable that we will deliver that uh, double digit return on phase one. And I just wanted to add, which we sort of uh, also are telling people, this is phase one. We have hot milk capacity, so we can double the output to 1.2 million tons of rolled products. And the capital intensity for that brownfield expansion will be much lower, $1,500 to $2,500 per ton, whereas the phase one was at $6,800 per ton. So overall, I think uh, this is a project that's going to last 30 to 40 years. So yes, we took a... a a hit by the taking the capex up but i think in the long run this is going to be a very good and accretive project in just a few seconds satish will you do lower double digits or higher teens can you specify that are you talking about 10 to 12 percent are you talking about 15 to 8 16 18 percent we that the the latter was what we had guided before the former is what we are guiding now and it's at the higher end of the edge of the range that you just mentioned. All right. Okay. Uh, talk us through very quickly the demand and pricing uh, outlook for the rest of this calendar year, Satish, on both aluminium and copper, especially the China factor. So I think that, you know, uh, the good news, of course, is that uh, we delivered a good quarter three. And normally quarter three is seasonally low for novellas because of Thanksgiving and New Year. We do our annual maintenance shutdowns. And uh, we are seeing an extremely strong Q4 for India, which is Q1 for the rest of the world. And I, what is encouraging for us is in uh, CAN, the destocking is over. The CAN demand has come back quite well. Uh, auto has always been strong for us on the back of uh, EVs. Uh, aerospace, as you know, is booming for us. And I think the U.S. interest rate environments, people now think, you know, the, the, the speculation is more when the cuts will happen rather than whether it will happen. So the building and construction sector is also coming back to life. So I think internationally for us, the demand scenario looks very good for the coming year. In India, the, the scenario has always been very optimistic. Uh, if you look at our copper uh, dep department, they had probably the highest quarterly EBITDA ever. Uh, electrification, again, is a big driver. Green energy is a big driver. So I think that from a demand scenario, we don't see uh, much uh, concerns. Now, you mentioned China. China is important to us for commodity prices. The aluminium, if you look at LME, it's running between 2150 to 2200, whereas supply demand is quite tight. So I think here 
the macro stuff is important. Will the Chinese economy show signs of growth? Will Europe come back to life? Will the war escalate or not? This is what's keeping the commodity prices like aluminium and copper a little bit on the lower side because the fundamentals of supply demand actually point towards prices going higher if things calm down. All right, Satish, I have time for one quick last question. So I'm going to ask you a news-related question. Uh, India has a rare earth auction, uh, you know, underway since late last year, expected to end in the later part of this month. Are you participating in that? Sorry, what auction? Rare earth auction. So it's called critical minerals, and yes, we are. We are looking at things like lithium, graphite, nickel, there are copper ores. Uh, so there are quite a few interesting um, critical mineral auctions coming up. We have taken and applied for most of these mines. They are all exploration licenses. And yes, we are looking and we will be participating. Actually, it's very interesting how underexplored India is for these type of critical minerals. And I think using our mining expertise, we are certainly going to be participating in that. Uh, Satish, can you elaborate a little bit more on your interest in that critical minerals auction? I mean, you know, specifically, what are you looking to bid for? Uh, what kind of, you know, outlay do you have in mind in terms of the, you know, the minerals that you are seeking to build capacity in? So, look, it's, it's all related to the non-ferrous side. It's all related to what's happening in green energy, electric batteries. So, anything. So, if you look at it, graphite is there in electric batteries. Nickel is there in electric batteries. Lithium is there. So, all these things that are related to electrification and electric batteries is really where we are focusing on. I don't know if that helps, but we are not going into steel or iron ore or many of these other things. We are quite focused on the non-ferrous. I'm aware of that, but any numbers? I'm aware, I'm aware no, of the I, focus. I, any numbers you can leave us with? No, because we are right now at the exploration stage. So, you know, these mines you have to bring and explore. So the numbers are not the uh, main thing. It's not going to be a huge spend, but we have to invest the time to do the uh, exploration part and that's what we are going to do and it's, this is going to take a couple of years for India to do proper exploration before you know large-scale mining happens.